Good morning, good morning, good morning, shalom. What a privilege on this Friday to spend some quality time with you. Yes, salamat siyam to all my Indonesian friends. <clears throat> my voice is becoming more better. I just felt this morning I really want to, to minister on something just to, so that we can hear the word of God. Amen. What a privilege this morning. I'm so excited. Lydia, goeiemore. Praise the Heer. Praise God. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Yes, I thought of to take off today, but then, yeah, the Spirit of God just lays something on my heart. Mariki. Mariki, hello. Good morning. Oh, salamat siang. Already afternoon in Indonesia. Yes, middag, Mariki. Praise God. Hallelujah. So yeah, it is Friday, um, yeah, I went also this morning for the, I don't know if they call it the PCR test, but, but yeah, whatever, let's sit around the word this morning, I just want to bless you with the words, you know, sometimes we know the truth, but sometimes it's hard to do the truth, if I can say that, let's pray this morning. And then I will share the word of God this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. As we just become quiet right now, Holy Spirit, that you will speak unto us. Maybe for many people it's a minor thing. But many times, Lord, we ask, how come I am not blessed? How come I do not receive what I pray for? How come others have what I do not have? Today, we just want to become quiet. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Touch us right now. Let the word of God just show us if there's any envy or jealousy in our lives, Lord. Maybe this is the reason why much of the blessings that you want to bless us, Father, cannot come through. And I just pray that this word will touch everyone's heart, Lord. It's not about judgment. It's just to come before your throne and say, God, inspect us, just check if there's anything in our hearts where we envy what other people have. Father, we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God for that. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Hallelujah. Um, I'm talking about Mims Goyamore. I'm talking this morning about envy presents, uh, uh, prevents my blessing. And you know what? When we think about jealousy and envy, we always think about the extreme. You know, we, it's easy to point at someone and say, ah, that person is full of envy. That person is full of jealous of what other people have. But many times, Pastor Saki, Goeiemore, good morning. But many times, you know, if we look at the extreme, we, Bula, Goeiemore, good morning. We do not see that maybe some of that is also relevant in our lives. Ansi Khuyamora, good morning. So this morning my message, envy prevents my blessing. Maybe just let God speak to your heart this morning. Let God just touch you. If there's any envy in your heart, you know, then you know what to come and say, God, forgive me. I really want to tell you, you know, when I've started, Lydia, you will know that. When we started the church in Uppington and, uh, you know, the church started to grow, it was so amazing, you know, people moved from one condition to a better condition. Uh, there were some people that living in, in, in truly shacks and later on they, they lived in a, a, a brick building and later they had their own building. People had no cars and then people had a car and then later they bought a new car or they had a second car. We saw how God blessed the congregation. Everybody shared in that blessing. You know, we used to have this and this not to make an idol about when somebody have a car or bought a car or even a house. You know, but especially when it comes to vehicle. You know, then on a Sunday we will just lay our hands upon the car and we pray God's blessing. And all the leadership of the church and everyone participate and we rejoice before God laying our hands on this person's car and we bless that. And you know what started to happen? Everyone in the church started to receive a blessing. And this is why today, 
You know, I just felt I want to share this with, with you because envy, you know, we always think about the, the, let's say the extreme, but maybe in your hearts, let today the word of God just speak into your heart. Maybe there's a bit of jealousy or envy or whatever. It can be somebody's calling. It can be a, maybe the income somebody has or the house he lives in or the car he drives or, or his lifestyle. But I want to tell you, let's look at what the word of God says regarding that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3. Now I'm going to read this for you in three different translations. So let's see. In the Amplified it says, For you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh. Now listen what it says. So if you have envy, and it's coming there. So if you have envy and jealousy, you're still unspiritual. It means you struggle to move in the supernatural. And it's in the supernatural where the blessings first manifest and then manifest in the natural. So envy and jealousy keeps you unspiritual. It keeps you being operated in the flesh. It says, for you are still unspiritual, having the nature of the flesh under the control of ordinary impulses. It says that it's actually an ordinary impulse. For as long as there are envy and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you. He says, um, as long as there are issues that we have with each other within the body of Christ. Listen what he says. Um, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh behaving yourselves after human standard and like mere men? He says, listen, look into yourselves. Maybe it's because of you are unspiritual, because you are in the flesh, because envy and jealousy is the thing, it's the impulse that keeps you in the flesh and that you cannot receive what God has got in store for you. Let me read for you in the Passion Translation. For you are living your lives dominated by the mindset of the flesh. So in this scenario, in this a translation, it speaks that if you have envy and jealousy, you have the mindset of the flesh. Well, you cannot receive if you have the mindset of the flesh, because your reasoning and your impulses will be natural and according to the flesh. He said, ask yourselves, is there jealousy among you? Just see, it brings every time that the mindset of the flesh that dominates, comes from jealousy and envy. Therefore he says, and this is the, the Passion Translation, ask yourselves, is there jealousy among you? Do you compare yourself with others? Come on, don't be so holy this morning. How easily we can compare to others, especially if we really desire something and somebody else has that or get that. I mean, it's an impulse. It mean, doesn't mean you walk in that every day. It's at that moment you saw your neighbor or maybe your, your aunt or <coughs> somebody you know bought the bucky or the car or the thing that you really desire. It's an impulse. It's on the moment it happens. He says, do you compare yourself with others? And you know what? How many people in the world in the body of Christ compare themselves, especially when it comes with, to their calling, you know, and, and their anointing. They always want to be, they compare themselves to that person, but you have an, a unique anointing. God has placed something in you. It's something that you need to develop in association with God. But if you stay with envy, you stay in the flesh, you stay in the mindset of the flesh, and you will not receive the blessing of God. Now he says, do you quarrel? <laughs> it's so amazing, the passionate translation. He says, ask yourself this. Are there jealousy among you? Do you compare yourself with others? Do you quarrel like children and end up taking sides? If so, this only proves that you are living your life centered on yourselves. When you are life-centered on yourself, you cannot receive the blessing of God. You close the door what God wants to bless you because you start to move in a carnal way. You know, 
And I want to I want to go with what God actually says how we should handle it. He says, He says, are you are living your life centered on yourselves, dominated by the mindset of the flesh, and you behave like unbelievers. So, what is the main thing? The main thing is we are in the flesh, and if we are in the flesh, even if it's for a moment, we cannot receive what God has got in store for us. Let's, uh, let's read this in the message translation. As long as you grab for what makes you feel good, as long as you grab for what makes you feel good or makes you to look important, are you really much different than a babe at the breast? Content only when everything's going your way. So, three different translations, but one message that envy and jealousy is impulses that keeps you in the flesh. And then you are not content when things is not going your way. So, we see here that envy comes from fleshly impulses, meaning the following. It means it's not every day that you envy. But let's say today you hear the phone call and maybe your brother or somebody calls you and said, Hallelujah! You know, I, I bought a, a double cab bucket or I bought a house. You know, and then suddenly the impulse just arises. You have an opportunity to bless him and be happy with him. But the impulse, the carnal thing comes. And the moment it comes, you cancel actually what you desired and brought before God because you move in the flesh and you look at what happened to the friend or the family that's being blessed. And I want you to understand this today. A man may be in Christ truly regenerated and forgiving for his past sins and yet be carnal because this is an impulse. That is according to, I mean, if you read Romans 7, 18, let's read for I know that nothing good lives within the flesh of my fallen humanity. The longings to do what is right are within me, but willpower is not enough to accomplish that. It means that if there's envy, you are not happy for the person that receives something. And being not happy, meaning you cut yourself off what God can do for you for your desire. So, the best way to discover if, you know, um, to get over envy and jealousy is just test yourself. If somebody has something and you are waiting for that, maybe a new microwave, maybe a new bread machine or whatever, there's a desire in your heart and somebody get that and you not yet. You've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been seeking God. What is your first impulse when you hear that? Is it one of, why, why not me, God? How come? What does this person have I don't have? What is your first impulse? I mean, if you feel a bit jealous, that's when you're supposed to say, God, forgive me. This is the mark of the flesh. I don't want to be envy. I don't want my blessings to be prohibited by my impulse and my, of my carnal flesh. So, God forgive me if I cannot immediately be happy for what somebody else receives. Maybe what I desire. Amen. So, when you feel jealous, uh, be honest with God and ask Him to help you to live free from that. We are challenged. Amen. Anything we hide, you know, has power over us. So, we don't speak that envy. We don't speak that jealous. But you know what? We feel it in the heart. We smile for the person, but in our heart it's like we have this, this battle going on with ourselves and God. But how come God? But what is the key this morning? The key is actually to bless and be happy. And this is what we've seen in the congregation. The more the congregation participate and be happy for other people what they receive, the more God bless the congregation. The more the congregation grow in the blessings of God. If it's financially, you know, people didn't have a job and they started receiving a job. People had a job and they started getting promoted. And the whole congregation could testify how they grow financially in so many areas that how God just blessed them. But what was the key? They were happy 
with a true heart when somebody else received something. Because also someone was happy when they received something. Being a blessing means being happy for that person. You see, I mean, let's be honest. Sometimes when you hear somebody receive something, I mean, what's in your mind? God, when is it going to happen to me? So when that thought enters into your mind, you, you know, you have a choice. You can either in your heart have that envy and ask God why, or you can open up your mouth, take authority over what's in your heart, and say, I am happy for you. If God can do it for you, He can do it for me. I bless you, my brother. I bless you for what you receive. Amen. You know, sometimes if a young woman is unmarried and she pray and ask God to give her a husband, she may have a difficulty being truly happy for her friends when they get married. Come on, let's be honest this today. You may have, more of my mind, you have many young girls that wants to be married. But it, it's like, it always, it's not happening to them. But their friends starting to get married and getting engaged. And you know what is the bad part? Your envy to be married, your envy towards your friend that's getting married, you prevent yourself from the blessing of God. It's like, you know, the other day I was speaking about, you know, waiting on God's promise about Abram and, and Sarah. And uh, God said, you will have a son. And they've waited and waited. And at one point, Sarah said, well, maybe misunder we misunderstood God a bit. Let's help him. You take my, 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 my servant or my, my maid. And, and, and then Ishmael was born. But Ishmael was not the promise. But Ishmael came in place of the promise. And it's, it probably made that the promise had to wait until, you know, they could have dealt with Ishmael, you know, when he was big enough. Sometimes our envy, you know, that thought that we have, that carnal impulse we have, makes us to pause what God wants to bless. God wants to send you your husband, but you've missed the test. You've missed the moment. If you've been happy for them and blessed them, you know what? I guarantee you God would have sent your husband already. Amen. I said instead of being unhappy or jealous or envious, we all need to learn to be happy for others and let their blessings be an encouragement to us. What is the key today? When God bless someone else, let it encourage you. Don't change your encouragement with envy, even in your heart. Amen. We can believe that what God did for them, He can do for us. Amen. He did it, you know, for them. So much more He can do it for you today. But it's the carnal. So the moment you envy, you move out of the spirit into a carnal impulse. And you block what God wants to give you through your action. Amen. We should learn to pray for other people to be blessed. We should pray for God to do for them. And we want Him to do for us. You know, when somebody receives something that you want, bless them, pray for them, release God's favor upon them. And you will see what God is going to do. You know, we live in difficult times. And, you know, it's like many people feeling, they're feeling more better if they can have something. You know, a desire. God made Pastor Marius, uh, good morning. You know, maybe, you know, we are under such an oppression of so many things. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's the situation. Maybe it's safety. There are so many things that we are challenged today. And people are, you know, God, can, can I just have something so I can see that God loves me? Listen, God don't need to give you something to show His love for you. He already died on the cross for you, Pastor Maris. Hello. Um, I want you to, Jundri, hello. Um, I want to tell you today. But the moment you allow envy, that impulse, that carnal impulse. Listen, envy is not something you walk uh, every day with. Envy is that moment you hear somebody receive that you want. And then in your heart it's like, ah, God, what happened? How come? When it's my turn. And you know what God wanted you to do? Bless them. Hallelujah, my friend. Praise God. I'm, you just encourage me. If God's going to give you, He will give to me. You see the difference? 
We are, we are called to bless, to empower and prosper each other. Not to envy what we have. I mean, we should bless others and not be afraid they will get ahead of us. And I think this is another thing. We, we live as Christians, but still we operate in certain things with impulses of the carnal flesh. You know, you know we will say, ah, it doesn't matter what car I drive, what house. But let your family or somebody just buy a better car or a better house. Just, test, just check what's in your heart. It's when you are silent in your heart. If you feel disappointment, why not you? You have envy, my friend. You are blocking your blessing through the envy. How do I open up, you know, that God can bless me? By being happy for the person that received that you actually want. Being encouraged and bless that person, then you will see God will bless you. Amen. We must not envy anyone else's appearance or possessions, education, social standing, marital state, the gifts or talent, job or anything, because that will only hinder your own blessing. So the moment you desire something of someone, you are moving into the carnal flesh. You are moving, and the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 that I've just read, you are unspiritual. How can a man think he can receive something from God if he's in the flesh? It's when we are in the spirit. So it's in the spirit that we operate and showing the character of Jesus Christ. How? If we saw somebody blessed, we are excited and we show forth the character, thank you God you blessed him. I know I will receive in due time. Amen. And you know being jealous or envy is actually just a waste of time. We all have gifts that God gave us. They do not come from any other source. God already has given you a gift. And I'm talking maybe more in line of your calling. You look at this successful pastor and this evangelist. Listen. You are blocking your own anointing. You are. You will not flow in the fullness what God has planned for you because you are unspiritual and you are in the flesh at that moment and you cannot receive. Why? Because you are unspiritual. You do not allow the spirit. You actually cut off your own flow from God. I mean, we must be content with what, you know, God sends us. I mean, God's got a unique unique plan for your lives i mean we can trust him and we know he knows his business i want to tell you this today let's read in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 to 11 so we need to put the word to work i mean i planted the seed apollo watered the plants but god made you grow but god made you grow it's not the one who plants or the one who waters who is at the center of the process, but God, who makes things to grow. Planting and watering are menial servant jobs at minimum wages. What makes them worth doing is the, is the God we are serving. You happen to be God's field in which we are working, or to put it in another way, you are God's house. This is in a Passion Translation. Using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed blueprints. Apollo is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. So remember there's only one foundation. Whatever you build in your life, whatever word you release over, the foundation is Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. Amen. We do not lay another foundation. Amen. So many times people try to build their lives on many things. People, you know, and this is, you know, we are building. And the building comes to fulfillment. By having envy, it's like you, you, God didn't plan you to have that door or having that window. But yet you want that. But God has got a unique door and a unique window for you. But now you try to change what God has destined for you. And that's why you cannot receive. You, you actually prohibit God to bless you in what you desire for yourself. Amen. So, I want to conclude today. I don't want to... I just, I just want you to understand something. Let me go back. 
to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 in the Passion Translation. For you are living your lives dominate, domin, dominated by the mindset of the flesh. Ask yourselves, is there jealousy among you? Do you compare yourselves with others? Do you quarrel like children and end up taking and, and end up taking sides? You know, just those three are characteristics of impulses of the flesh. How many times we take sides? How many times we compare ourselves? You know what? We, we pray God bless us. We pray and we bring our desires. But it's just like we cannot understand how come it's not coming through. And today, the key is the following. When somebody receives something you have, or you see a ministry, and you know that God has called you being an evangelist, bless that ministry, bless that man of God, bless the person, whatever somebody receives, be happy with them. Even say, can I pray God's blessing over what you've received? This is the way, this is the key, how God will start bless you. But if you start comparing, why not me, God? How come I did? What did I do wrong? You've done, you've done nothing wrong. Leona Huya Mora. You've done, the only thing, the only thing you've, you've done wrong, you for a moment had an impulse of, of the flesh. And that impulse made you not to be happy for what that person has received. It says, if so, this proves that you are living your life centered on yourself. So if you quarrel and taking sides, if you compare yourself to others, if you are jealous about what other people receive, your life is actually just centered upon yourselves. And that's why you struggle to receive God's blessing. Because it's like, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give and when you receive, you know what, that somebody is looking at you? Maybe you've received something somebody else has been praying for six months or one year or three years for. They've not yet received. Maybe you've prayed for two months. Maybe you've prayed, I want to go on holiday, and then you heard somebody else. Or maybe you go on holiday, but somebody else has been trusting God for finance for two years. But they excited with you for what you've received. Because in due time, they will receive. But if you start to look and you, you move in the flesh by wondering how come God can bless them. What do they do? What you do not have. You are actually envying. You are actually blocking. The Bible says actually you are unspiritual. And that's why it cannot come. And I, I really encourage you in the beginning of this month. Let's be a blessing unto people. Doesn't matter. Let's be a blessing unto people. When somebody receives his breakthrough, you excite it with him. You pray with him. You bless him. If somebody already had a promotion, you just wait, but bless them. Be excited with them. You see, maybe somebody already start moving in their calling and God has opened a door. You just be happy with them. Bless them. And you will receive how God will bless you. You will receive how God will bring into fulfillment your breakthrough, your blessing. But if you cannot, if even if you inside yourself, you don't even say it out loud. Listen, God knows. If you in your heart says, but God, how come? How come? What they have, I don't. The only thing you do is you are self-centered. You want it now. But God's got so much better for you in store. And that's why I want to encourage you today. If you want to receive your blessing, get rid of envy. And if that impulse come, rebuke it. And say, God, forgive me for I felt an impulse of envy or jealousy when someone else received what I also wanted. I repent of that. God, help me that I can be happy. Let me a blessing unto them and bless them. Speak words of blessing over them. And you know what? You will see how soon your breakthrough will come. How soon God will bless you. How soon you will rise up out of your situation. And then you receive your blessing and someone else maybe also waited for a time. But let you 
when you receive been an encouragement to them. Amen. I would like to pray for you today. Father, I thank you for this word. Lord, sometimes we are born again. We are spirit-filled and we, we live this life to honor you and, and to live righteous. But it speaks here about impulses, Lord. A moment. Yet we bring our desires to you and sometimes, Father, people receive what we've desired even before we've received that. We've been praying, Lord. And then in our hearts, in that moment, we felt, but why not me? When will I receive? And we're not really truly happy for that person. God, it's only because we have envy in our lives, jealousy. And we just want to repent today. Father, in every area where we envy people, what they've received, what we want, where we were jealous maybe of other people's success, Lord, or calling or financial, Lord, we repent, Lord. We pray today that the blood of Jesus will set us free, that we will rule, we will not be in this carnal or fleshly impulse, in this mindset of the flesh, Lord, that you will immediately, we will take authority. And the only way, Lord, is to be happy and to bless someone what they've received, what we want. And therefore, Lord, I just pray, wash us with your blood. Stir the gifts, Lord. Let us see in this month if we can, whatever we see people receive, being excited, knowing that our blessing is on its way. Father, with excitement and with joy, let's bless them. Father, help us in this month to look at the small things that can influence what in our relationship with you, Father. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just touch us right now. Just break every envy and jealousy over us. Father, every stronghold, I tear it down in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I pray, fill us with the spirit of purity, Father, with your truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May God bless you. I know this morning the word, you know, I just felt God said, you know, sometimes we miss. We're only looking for the big things. But sometimes it's the, the small things that influence us. And I just want to encourage you today. Jesus loves you. Your breakthrough is on its way. Your breakthrough or what you've prayed for is on its way. You will see but start being happy for other people. Start being happy what God is doing in their lives. And you will see God will bless you. May you have an amazing weekend. May God bless you. May He make His face to shine upon you. And you know what? Be happy. Choose to be happy. Choose to have this excitement in this weekend. Because God has given us another weekend that we can serve Him. Can make a difference. Even if we just start to pray and just worship. But let's make a difference. Share this with someone. Maybe there's someone that needs to know what is the blockage in their lives that prevent God to bless them. Jesus loves you. Have an amazing weekend. Amen.